presentation is that some natural tendencies of social systems, I understand social systems as a system composed of living objects, that the tendencies of social systems are mercilessly inevitable. And if we are prepared now to change them. What does it mean, natural tendency? I think that in any social human system, there is natural tendency towards socialism. I will explain it a little, a little bit later. My agenda. I will introduce myself. I will say about my expectation of, uh, after the collapse of the Soviet Union and Polish People's Republic. I will tell a little more about the physics of life. And I will present a very interesting experiment uh, of John Calhoun, your co compatriot. Later I will tell about social cycles. I will tell, tell, tell about the rise of Big Brother by Anatoly Fyodosyev. And we will probably discuss if we can change the inevitable uh, sink of um, American society toward socialism. Uh, I was born in 1955. All my wife, I remember uh, when I was th three years old, I asked myself always why the things happened like this or how. And nobody gave me a logical and consistent answers. My pen name is Free Slow. So the, the main uh, part of this uh, pen name is Free. I am a freedom fighter. I am a typical libertarian. I, I am a strong supporter of individual liberty, free markets, and limited accountable governments. Uh, I used to be a scientist and I work as a bio-cybernetician, bio but it, this job in Poland in, during the communism were, were, were so badly paid that, that I switched just after the break of socialism, I switched to the private business. And this business, uh, working with the people, I learn a lot. It's a very good, excellent school about psychology and um, different things. Uh, I, am, I used to climb, I climbed in mountains uh, for 20 years. Uh, this is uh, Petit Dru uh, in French Alps, my best performance. So, and uh, the name uh, of, of uh, my ascent was named uh, Direct American. So, American and French. I am passionate about the sport, I am passionate about science, and I am a lecturer in PAFERE. It's a Polish-American uh, foundation for economical development and, um, and something else. And ASBIRO, Academy of, uh, self, of Business and Self-Development. As well, I support very much ICL, uh, uh, International Society for Individual Liberty, the president of which is uh, Ken Skuland. Let me now introduce my country. Poland used to be the United States. In 17th, 16th century, Poland and Lithuania were united. Now the, the territory of Poland is like this, and we were, let's say, four or five ti times bigger. So this is uh, all the maps from the 16th century. We ceased to exist as a country in 18th century. We disappeared as a country. We came back to existence in 1914. We lost our independence in 1939. We were obliged to start the socialist experiment in 1945. Socialism brought us to economical misery. Really misery, you will see in a moment. In 1981, the martial law was introduced. In 1989, Poland broke the chains of socialism. But the free market economy lasted only 10 years. The collapse of, of Poland. So uh, I, wa I, I was about 20 years old, and I saw the scenes like this. I participated in, uh, in uh, strikes of um, uh, students in Polish uh, Technical University. And I used to go to the shops. These are shops. If you were uh, before in the presentation, so this is typical socialist shop. There is nothing inside. Naked hooks and naked shelves. Sometimes they throw some meat and you can, you can get it, okay? Uh, this is a typical propaganda. Uh, even the journalists were uh, obliged to, to wake the military uniform 
and uh, okay, they said uh, that the communists are trying to do their best to, uh, to develop our country, but reality was completely different. Uh, since the breakdown of communism, uh, so it's since 1991, Polish GDP is rising. So this, this is a uh, chart of this. And within 10 years, cars and dishwasher, dishwashers cease to be luxury goods. So I used to climb uh, before the breakdown of socialism in 1980s in France. And I remember that French people asked me, so dishwasher is a luxury in Poland? Yes, I said, I have uh, no idea what does it mean, dishwasher. <laughs> um, also, I lived uh, as a child in the, Soviet, uh, in the Soviet Union. So I have a lot of experience. And I eyewitnesses both the collapse of socialism in Poland and the collapse in the Soviet Union. And now, what is, I, would, I, I would like to share this, uh, this thought with you. I had... I had uh, I was 20 years old, and me and my f fellows, we didn't believe, we didn't even let uh, such an idea let, uh, enter our, our head that eternal and in uh, Soviet Union can break down. It will last forever. We will live in misery, but it's impossible. It's, it is so strong, and the communists are so strong that uh, it will never break down. However, it broke. So, uh, my expectation, because I saw the two breakdowns of two social systems as a, as a young guy, and I s s started to ask myself, why do the intelligent ancient Greeks no longer prosper? Why did the well-organized Rome collapse? So now, and I thought that now, after the breakdown of the Polish People's Republic and the collapse of the Union uh, of Soviet Socialist Republic, I thought that the unchained scientists and the brand new government elected by and devoted to the people and all the media, finally uncensored, will quickly and logically explain why it happened. And that it will be thought, taught in schools to prevent next collapses. But nothing like this happened. And 10 years after Poland rejected socialism, our, in brackets, our government started to commit the same series of errors that the overthrown socialist already did. And when I am here in America, you talk about the same things. What kind of errors? So, these guys are state employee. This is a period just after the break, breaking of socialism. They were 160,000 of state employee. Now, it's not now, now we are here. So I think that it tripled. During 20 years, it tripled. It's enormous. So my expectations, I, I went on asking my questions. And these guys gave me pieces of answers. You can see here Ludwig von Mises, Richard Dawkins, Janusz korwin mikke It's a really strong libertarian. He didn't change his ideology since ever. He was young, he was libertarian, now he's libertarian, he's 72 two years old. Um, Edward Osborn Wilson, Mark Skousen, Darwin, Jesus. It may be, may be uh, may be considered as a stupidity because I compare, I, I uh, you know, uh, Darwin and Jesus, be, uh, one uh, uh, and the other, but they influence uh, influenced my, my thought. Suvorov, it's a Russian guy who, who, is, uh, who is writing a lot of uh, uh, excellent work about uh, communist and, and Soviet Union. Uh, Mr. Skuland, he was a detonator of, um, of my thinking, okay, you came to Poland and you said, they print money. And I thought, oh, Jesus, he said like this, okay, everybody is saying that the government is pushing economy forward and they fight for development of Poland. And the guy here is telling the truth in the very simple words, they are printing money, that's all. And it was logical and consistent. And of course, Ayn Rand, who divided the society uh, uh, into atlases, the producers, producers, and moochers, takers. Give, uh, okay, so the production. Production is very important in, in my, my philosophy. So I fitted all these pieces of information which I get from the, from the libertarians and arrived to the physics of life. 
Because my education, I was educated as a technician, as a scientist, as a, uh, uh, so my, my main topic was applied physics, I created something like uh, the origin of species, but it, I developed this. I added the um, uh, Richard Dawkins thoughts and get the physics of life. It's a consistent and logical science devoted life. It's, uh, let's say, it's a theory of everything concerned light, life. I, uh, on my website, website you can find uh, how the life emerged from the chemical particles, not from the cells, but from the very, very, very beginning. And here, it's not a Mr. Uh, Dawkins, it's uh, Isaac Newton. Why? Because even if the physics of life, I have formulated three laws of life. Isaac Newton formulated three laws of motion, and this is the basis of mechanics, and because of this we are flying, we are driving cars and so on, and I have formulated three laws of, um, of life. So now let's switch to physics of life, America and Big Brother. I like garden, my wife as well. And we planted uh, two years ago a maple, maple, maple. Uh, am I right? It's a, it's a kind of, of tree. This tree was planted in a bad condition, in a bad ground, in a bad situation. And this plant was planted in a very, in a very good uh, position. And what I saw, that in poor conditions, plants and generally living objects invest in offspring. This tree is already dead, it doesn't exist. And in good conditions, plants, living objects, invest in themselves. Okay, so there is some relation, there is uh, some conditions and there is some result. And it concerns not only maples, but green flies. And even Polish society after the Second World War, uh, there, was, there was a baby boom just after the war. It was very bad condition. You can see on the first page, I was uh, uh, really un unaware. Okay. So now the key point of my presentation is the experiment of John Calhoun. Uh, what he did, he introduced the mouse to the, to the special home and provided the mouse any kind of uh, food, any kind of, uh, of water and nesting material. They were no predators and also he protected them with the health care, some kind of uh, health care. Uh, the only adversity was the limit on space, the size of which was predicted to host 3,840 3, mice, about 400 mice. And what happened? So this is the period A. The, there is four males and four females. So the, the number of mice uh, rests stead, rest stable. And the first offspring uh, uh, appeared in this period uh, 100 days after the uh, after the colonization and we saw the dynamic uh, rise of number of mice i will explain uh, in, the, in details but later this velocity of of uh, multiplication really slowed down and later in the last phase you see the number of mice go down, went down completely to the total self-extinction. So the society disappeared. They, will, they have everything. They have nesting material, water, food, and so on, and they extinct. Why? And how it happened? And uh, if, you can, uh, if you can see, the maximum of mice was uh, about 2,000. And uh, the space were predicted for 4,000, so they even didn't reach the uh, overpopulation. Okay, so to, uh, to emphasize, no shortage of food, water or and nesting material, no predators, limited opportunities for transmissible disease, the only adversity is space limitation. Social ad uh, adjustment, it's a phase A inside of, the, of this uh, first, uh, first phase. Uh, so the John Calhoun uh, named this uh, named this phase social adjustment or strife period. Uh, considerable social turmoil among the eight mice until they became adjusted to each other and their expand surroundings. Territories were established and nests were made. On day 104, first litters were born. So it was the first period, fighting period. 
Uh, phase B inside, it's a rapid growth. Uh, the John Calhoun named it exploit period. Population doubling time was about 55 days. Social organized established. Frequency of litters proportional to social dominance. Uh, the birds, births tend to be uh, concentrated in some sets, sets of nest box according to dominant males, while other males, non-dominant, withdraw. Uh, okay, at, uh, at the end of this phase, there were three times as many socially immature mice as they were socially established older ones. So in this phase B exploit period, we observe the dynamic rise of, of mice, but also they withdraw with contact with each other. Which, with each other. Phase three, stagnation. Population doubling, uh, doubling time was about 140 days. The male ability to defend territory declines. The nursing females became aggressive, essentially taking over the role of territorial males. This aggression was transferred to their own young who were attacked, wounded and forced to leave home several days before normal winning. Homosexual behavior appears. Uh, incident, uh, okay, it's so difficult to read that I, I will give it up. The peak population was 2,200 mice, yet 20% of all nest sites were usually unoccupied. So there is no question of overpopulation. Because the, the mice are, uh, they no need any effort to get food, they became unsocial. They no need help of other mice. They cease to, the, cease to multiply. And the phase, uh, the, uh, the last phase, it's a death, the death phase, the die per period. The population increase abruptly ceased on day 560. Incidence of pregnancies declined very rapidly with no young surviving. The last conception took place about day 90, uh, 920. And what is really interesting that all, uh, all the newborn mice appeared as a beautiful exhibit of the species with keen, alert eyes and a health, well-kept body. These mice, however, could not cope with unusual stimuli. Though they looked inquisitive, they were, in fact, very stupid. So, I like this sentence. In fact, very stupid. They looked very nice and they were very stupid and they didn't multiply. They didn't involve themselves to, uh, to have next generation. Okay, so we forget about mice and now we talk about people because you can ask, okay, what is the relation about experiment uh, with mice and, and uh, w what does it matter to the men? Uh, we are intelligent and so on and so on. But if you go to Australia and you will talk with Australian about aborigines which get money, food, alcohol and, and, and water and you will see the degradation of aborigines. They are becoming quickly dead because they, are, they do not fight for food. So they lose their natural <laughs> intelligence. Okay, so there is uh, however some similarities. Now. Mr. Titler, it was Scottish philosopher uh, in 18th century, uh, who is credited with the following statement. The average, the average age of the world's greatest civilizations from the beginning of history has been about 200 years. During those 200 years, this nation always proceeded through the following sequence, sequence from bondages to spiritual faith from spiritual faith to great courage, from courage to liberty, from liberty to abundance, from abundance to selfishness, from selfishness to complacency, from complacency to apathy, from apathy to dependence, and from dependence back into bondage. Okay, maybe he was right, maybe no. I think there is something, okay, we can see. But he wasn't only one. He was Scottish, but there is another uh, British Sir John Glubb and he said that life cycle of an empire mm, lasts about 250 years and the stages of the rise and fall of fall of great nations as, are as follows the age of pioneers the age of conquest the age of commerce the age of affluence the age of intellect 
And finally, the age of decadence, which is finished by another nation who comes and strikes weak empire with a coup de grace. Coup de grace in French, it means you kill the so badly wounded uh, person uh, that uh, he sees through to uh, to, uh, to feel pain, okay? It's a coup de grace. Yes, okay, so thank you very much. Uh, so according to this, according to Sir Glab theory, uh, American empire has 11, 19 years remaining. <laughs> okay. Uh, and now, the second, the third cycle. So a couple years ago, I was struck by the book of Mr. Anatoly Fyodosyev. He was a Russian, very high technician in the Soviet Union. And he escaped to Paris in his 60s. Imagine, you, you are 60 years old and you quit your own country because you are fed up with the regime and you start brand new life. In very small book named, titled, Trapdoor, The Man and Socialism, he described his ordinary conditions in the first part. In the second part, he gave the general view, general table of the development of socialism, how it develops. So, uh, I have pre uh, prepared here several copies of, uh, of his work because it's, uh, there is no time to, to tell it de in, in details. So if you are interested, please hand uh, to the people. And uh, it is available in, uh, uh, in the internet uh, under address tnij.org slash f-i-e-d-o. Okay, so uh, in this paper there is details and here is general overview. So Mr. Uh, Fyodosyev said that we have several stages. We start with the stage of seizing power. After we have consolidation of the power. Later we have period of collapse period of discontent and period of de decomposition of the, of the social system. And you can see the curves here. So that the cruelty of secret police in the first stages, they are very cruel, but later it's go down. Later in the final, in the stage of decomposition, it rises. Here is a, a curve of productivity, very important thing. Here in America, you are talking about uh, working place, but it doesn't mean the, the working place, it, it means nothing. The productivity is uh, the most important. In socialism, everybody has, had uh, working place, but the productivity was none. So we cannot buy anything. Because of this, you have seen the empty shops I have shown you. So productivity is rising in the consolidation period and after it's going down, down, down till empty sh shelves completely. In the face of the uh, decomposition, there is really nothing to buy. There is, uh, the money has no value. I said that uh, in, uh, in Poland in 19, uh, eight, 1987, we paid with eggs because money has no value. So we exchange with eggs, you know, we came to the such, such uh, exchange. And now here, this, uh, the third curve, it's a number of secret police officers devoted to the regime. So in the first stage, there is not a lot of secret police officers. But it's a very good job. You are not responsible, you have power, you have killed even the people, and you get some money. So there is a lot of people who want to, to be secret police officers. But in the stage of collapse and discontent, the number of secret police devoted to the regime, because they are still uh, secret police officers, but they try, they switch their uh, minds, they, they uh, try to think, okay, it doesn't work, it's, there is something wrong here, okay, so uh, there is a split between, uh, between fundamentalists and just thinking secret of uh, police officers. Okay, now natural development of Big Brother. Freedom starts by respecting rights of others. 
James Madison formulated uh, some, some idea which I named James Madison di Dilemma. When creating a government that gives one the power over another, there are two main problems. What kind of power and how much the government should have to be able to fairly run and control the society. And the second problem, what kind of power and how much for the society to have to have a means to control over those in power, to stop them abusing their position. Because people in power naturally abuse their position. Who inflated the money? The ancient Romans. Uh, in Poland, Nicholas Copernicus has written the treatise uh, of money. I, you, you know, in Poland we name the, the law of Copernicus, you name this law uh, of uh, Grisham. Yes, it's a law of Grisham. Okay, so every, every people in power, they abuse this power. So this is the main thought of uh, James Madison dilemma. A core aspect of, of power in any form is to limit the means of control that the population has over them. And this is achieved by force, propaganda and media dependent on state, educational system dependent on state, gathering of all information about the citizens, building up a network of informants, and figure out that in uh, Eastern Germany, they were 8% of people as informal informants. So now imagine, we don't count uh, the young uh, kids and very old uh, people. Every second person reported to the regime. It was incredible, completely. In Poland it was quite the same. Uh, building up a network, uh, network of informants and introducing a state of internal and external fear. I remember in the Soviet Union and in Poland these bloody Germans, they threaten us with their tanks. These bloody Americans, they want to ruin our economy. We are working hard, we are so smart, but because of them, there is misery in our, uh, in our country. Okay? So it's, a, uh, of course, one of the means of, 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 of being in power. Okay? There is threat from outside or inside. So this uh, uh, these actions of, of the people of power violate, uh, violates the first rule of freedom. As I said, freedom starts by respecting the rights of, other, of others and leads to non-productivity and finally to economic collapse. So, as you can see, maybe you, you already see this in, in uh, the United States, that you are became less productive. I don't know, but in Poland, really, I worked in the uh, scientific institute and my boss didn't realize that I was absent for four months. <laughs> he, just, he just didn't know, okay? Okay, he was not absent. We worked from two weeks, we have written reports, what he discovered. Later we spent uh, making, uh, climb, uh, making climbing, doing shopping, and uh, as, as you said before, and uh, you know, d uh, making a lot of things, till the next period of reporting appeared. We, <laughs> we, uh, we worked for two, uh, two weeks, we gave the reports. And what did the, the, the CEO of our institute? He was aware that we are doing nothing. But what he can do? He cannot force us to work, okay? He said, Look, I have plenty of, of very good uh, scientific papers. You have to take, uh, you, you, you have to give us money. Okay, so the government gave the money to our institute and we were completely unproductive. And uh, all the economy in Poland and in the Soviet Union. Okay, so we said that uh, the people in power uh, gather all the information about the society to control. So. George Orwell, my favorite journalist, I would like I would like say that it's uh, every journalist should be as George Orwell, so objective and uh, uh, recognize his own own uh, errors and write very objectively and so on and so on. So he predicted what? Closed circuit television. Uh, I was told a couple presentation ago that uh, in the UK there is so much cameras that they take second place of cameras per capita. The first place is North Korea, okay? 
and uh, there is there are some systems who recognize the face so they they can follow you where you where you are going the position of, uh, okay they pick up position of our cell phones tablets computers the GPS system will soon be attached to our cars the medical criminal criminal files are stored on database and the first uh, if you are ill the first guy who uh, who know that you are ill is your doctor the second guy is google because you you went uh, you you go home and what are you looking you looking for you are searching information a google records all of this and he know okay you are Ill, you are ill uh, you have syphilis you are you are, you have had a heart uh, attack and so on and so on so uh, all kind of information are available and they can they can know where we are what we are thinking and talking what we are what we buy our social circle by by um, uh, facebook and even if they want they they can know our our intentions okay it's easy to understand if i am doing this and this if if i am booking the ticket to las vegas and i was signed up to freedom fest okay so he will go there within three months it's my intention i would like to go there and they know before this data can be and we can see in poland that it is used already against us against any of us in at any time political decisions are made using this data it was uh, presented in freedom fest last year so uh, they were a presentation how uh, your president mr obama is uh, is taking decisions he's making the polls polls during the night and he get right answer who will please and this data is used to manipulate our opinions can we change this natural tendency so i think I, so th this is my message you are going down you are just going to the full socialism and you will go, follow all the cycle of this socialism maybe not in the very same way that it happened in poland or in the soviet union because uh, uh, culture of anglo-saxon is a little bit different than culture of russians and little bit different than poles but i think that however you will follow yeah, and it will it will be very bad for uh, our our whole globe okay for our whole uh, earth uh, why i don't think so that uh, that uh, we cannot uh, change these tendencies because because people are bred to follow because the vast majority of us are not aware of john calhoun's experiment ron jones third wave experiment have you heard about this it was experiment made by your compatriot in 1960 he transformed a group of youngsters into group of fighting fascists within how many days how you think five five you can find it in, on my website or just type in uh, google but be aware if you type in google google will uh, will know that you are looking for, <laughs> for this experiment i was struck you know I am uh, 55 years old. I, uh, as I said, f since, every, uh, since ever, I asked myself why such a thing things happened. And only now I could see the John Calhoun's experiment. I saw this film, the third wave experiment. This is uh, uh, the picture of this film. And I read the Fyodosyev memoirs. And for me, these three pieces of big job and great job they opened my my eyes and i understood quite everything okay so this is my message try to read it try to study and maybe try to spread this idea i think this very little book of mr fedosyev uh, should be translated i know that it won't be a bestseller okay but it will it would be it will be the very good material to you to uh, to teach youngsters because it's really natural he, he has written about the ordinary life in in the soviet union who has the, who has power who has uh, uh, how the people behave and so on and this behavior is far worse than behavior of you of americans nowadays you are very polite you know in in russia the people were rude yes so you you were said it, it was just uh, you are very polite okay maybe it will uh, it will change remember poland was was one of the biggest countries of uh, 
of Europe, and later we cease to exist. So different th things happen, and the processes are quite similar. They repeat. Generally speaking, the physics of life is not taught in schools yet. I hope that uh, within 50, maybe 100 years, physics of life will be taught. But it is not taught because it's against... Uh, if we understand how the society works, we will not let the people in power to do what they do. Okay, so they are not interested in spreading this idea. Uh, we are spreading our society, our free mind society. I get some information from Ken, from uh, Marx Kausen, and now I have develop, developed this idea and I am spreading this idea. So maybe I, I put some seed to your mind and maybe you will develop some, some uh, more ideas, more intelligent. Maybe you can, you can find uh, the way how to spread it uh, and how to teach in a very easy way to, to youngsters. Okay, we are teaching. And I would like to ask you, Americans, try to do your best to stop the inevitable social cycle. Because I see uh, being here last year and this year that you undergo this cycle. This cycle is inevitable. We can talk. Uh, but there is no, no one who, who, who can fight because we just, uh, we are not in the face of uh, fighters. We are now, you are now in the face of intellectuals. You remember John Glapp cycle? You are intellectuals. And next phase, it's a phase of decadence. But if you fail, what, what I can advise? It's some kind of self-defense, Mr. Sol Solzhenitsyn have written this uh, because he was in prison for 20 years. You can deep enter to the science. You, you, can, you can study a lot of things. And this was psy psychiatrist Ross Ashby, the father of cybernetics. Uh, theory of systems, Ludwig von Bertalanffy was biologist. So you don't know, you don't need to know physics or mathematics, but you can just uh, study different sciences to better understand all the processes which happened in, in, in uh, living, uh, in the system composed of living objects. Uh, and if you want more about physics of life, there is a website, there is my uh, um, business cards uh, with the emails. I am open to discuss, I am open to answer the question. Maybe I will not answer immediately, but because uh, I have to translate, I have to work with my English teacher. Uh, I am explaining him in Polish, we discuss and we make translation. It's not so easy to um, uh, to formulate for me some subtleties of, of uh, different things, okay? So maybe my answer be, can be one week or two weeks, but I am open, uh, so if you are interested, please uh, write me an email, and emails are <laughs> flying for the time being, so we can communicate. Thank you very much. question for you. You mentioned that maybe Anglo-Saxon culture might be a little different from from Russia. One thought I had, and I wanted your take on this, is you know you talked about maybe America has been 200, 250 years. Well, America really came out of Britain, and we follow the same Western tradition, so wouldn't you say that maybe this society has been going on this way for 400, 500 years? Um, and maybe things will go longer than you might expect because of that Anglo-Saxon tradition. Yes, so, uh, you know, I said the first, uh, the first thing, I said that we, in, uh, when I was 20 years old, we cannot imagine that the Soviet Union will break down. It was in imaginable. And suddenly, in, within six months, nothing. The uh, Soviet Union uh, does no longer exist, okay? Uh, when I talked about uh, other Anglo-Saxons who lives in Hawaii, that I, I hope that your culture, your, uh, uh, your roots uh, of liberty, of hard work, and so on and so on, uh, are not similar to the culture of the Soviets, of the Russian uh, who developed the, the, the socialism, and, uh, and uh, Chinese who had very cruel uh, communist uh, experience. They said, Hey, no, look, but in the United Kingdom, it's, uh, it's a socialism nowadays. 
Okay, I don't live in the United States. I don't live in the UK. I have visited UK maybe three days I spent in, in England. In, uh, in, uh, in the United States, I wouldn't come to, to, to your country because uh, you require visa from Poles. And it's not true, it's not fair, because you can enter Poland yeah. just uh, with nothing. I said, no, I will not go there. But it happened that uh, you organized Freedom Fest and I said, it's uh, okay, it's an opportunity. I have to go here to, to meet the people who think like me, to share the idea. So I paid a lot of money to get this visa. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, the employee of state, so the employee of American embassy, they are very polite, as every, every American. But when you enter the embassy, you feel the pressure of the system. Okay, you have to line, you have to sign, you have to be patient, and so on and so on. It's not nice. Okay, so I don't know. I hope because you know I I am uh, uh, I am very scary about collapse of uh, United States. I like this country. Uh, I saw that uh, okay. Uh, in Latin America, uh, uh, the Arab countries, they consider you as expansionist and, and uh, aggressor and so on and so on. But if I compare Americans to Germans or to Soviets or to Russian, you are not aggressive because you won, uh, you help to win the First World War and you withdraw from Europe. You help to win the Second World War and you withdraw. You, you let's say, uh, you make some order, you introduce some order to Germany, Germany starts to flourish economically, and what the Russians did, we, we fell into misery. Okay, so there's different experience. So I hope that uh, your culture will, will help. So maybe this gathering of, of people will help that you will avoid finally this, uh, this collapse. Okay, you are talking about this. You are, have some influence. You you teach uh, uh, young people. So I hope and and I, uh, as I said, try to do all your best. Uh, please, could you s tell something about the fall of Roman Empire? W was it the same thing than than the, the Russian um, Empire? Uh, so in in, Soviet, in, in Soviet general, Empire? in generally, yes. generally speaking, it was quite the same. You know. So if you, if I compare you to the cactus. You are the living object and the cactus is the living object. You are built from cells and cactus is built from cells. Within, uh, with, uh, inside your cell, there is mitochondria, quite the same as mitochondria in cactus. So the fall of Roman Empire and the fall of Soviet Union and the fall of, of Ottoman Empire, I advise you to write, uh, to, uh, to read the paper of Sir John Glubb. It's, you know, it's 16 pages. Very, condensed information, very nice, very fi finely uh, written. And he said, all the scenario of collapses was the same. It was face of this, of this, of the composition, of cruelty and fall, economical fall. Okay, so this is the collapse. This is the root of all collapses. We, the society became less productive. I live in a hotel here in Las Vegas. Here I see you are people who, who move, uh, okay, you move uh, without problem, you walk. But I saw a lot of Americans, a lot of Americans who, who merely walk. Okay? And uh, I cannot imagine what they do for, for living, how they live, uh, who pays them and what kind of work they can do. Because they seem to, to suffer a lot. Okay? And so this is a problem. And uh, physics of life, the basic, uh, one of the basic uh, concept of physics of life is uh, its uh, resources and productivity. The penguin can eat, uh, can, uh, can survive four months without eating. And later he, he managed to find some food in his stomach to give to his, uh, his baby. Four months. Now let, now imagine yourself that you are not eating for let's say four weeks. Impossible. Okay, so this is productivity. This is effectiveness of, uh, of the living objects. So the fall of Roman Empire, it was presented perfectly by Marx Kausen last year in, in, uh, in Freedom Fest. It, it was the same, you know, they inflated money. American uh, government inflate the money. Polish government inflate the money. It's, it's, and this is one of sign of uh, uh, inevitable uh, economical collapse, and you know your your uh, your, uh, your your own country, France. 
It was a big power. All the Europe talked not in English. English was, wasn't, uh, you know, international language. We had Latin in, uh, at the very beginning of, uh, okay, in the medieval ages, and later it was French. Now who speaks French? Me and he, because he's a French. <laughs> and uh, I was educated in France. <laughs> Merci. <laughs> Very good, thank you. I have a question for the crowd and then for you. Um, I neglected to leave one of the handouts for myself, so if there's anybody who doesn't want their handout, I'd love to get it. Uh, are these uh, books available in English? Uh, no, so I am, you know, it's a very difficult, if, have you uh, read the book of Richard Dawkins, uh, The Selfish Gene? No. Okay. Uh, so uh, try to do this. It's uh, it's a book uh, rather complicated. This my book is also complicated beca because I touch a lot of uh, difficult issues. However, I have a lot of translation because uh, uh, I have my own personal teacher who comes to to me once uh, a month, once a week, and we we translate this book for uh, one or two hours. So a lot of things is already translated. If you are interested in some topics, because the, the index is already translated, just ask and I will translate specially to you, okay, and we'll send it. And maybe within 10 years it will be finally translated. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>